<laughs> Hi, this is Elliot from Old Pump People, and we're uh, interviewing Ro Robert Ressler um, from many movies, and let's rock this. Let's do this. Hi, Robert. How, you, how are you doing today? Good. I'm so glad to be here with you. Me too. Can, I, can you tell us a little bit of you, about your uh, acting class in, Hollywood, in the Hollywood Playground in Santa Monica, California? Oh, I'm glad you're asking me about that. Yeah, I do an acting class called the Hollywood Playground, where it started out, interestingly enough, where, you know, I'm, I'm venturing out and directing films now, and my wife suggested, since you're going to direct films, why don't you go out and start directing actors? And I thought that that was a really great idea, so I got this little class together, and it's turned out to be a little blessing in disguise, because the class has evolved. I've been going for now four years, and I've had fantastic guests, you know, relationships that I've developed over 30 years of my career. And I've had guests like Josh Brolin, David Arquette, Matthew Perry, Mike Binder, Keith David, Clayton Rohner. I mean, the list goes on. And we even had Academy Award director Stephen Gagan come out to the class. So it's a great opportunity for the students to learn from the horses' mouths. What is one of your favorite movies or shows that you were in? Well, I got to go with the first movie, Weird Science. I mean, it was so much fun and so exciting, first of all, to work with such an iconic director like John Hughes, who is a staple of the 80s, and to work with guys like Anthony Michael Hall, Robert Downey Jr., Bill Paxton. On my very first film, is just unforgettable, and it set a tone for me for the rest of my career to keep a good work ethic and to be grateful for my job. Do you still skate or surf? What do you like to do when you have free time to just relax? Well, absolutely. You know, I live in Santa Monica, California, and I live literally walking distance from two killer skate parks. So I have three sons, and they like to skate, they like to BMX, and we like to surf. And I live probably about three minutes walking distance from Santa Monica Pier. So there's all kinds of great surf spots where I live. So yes, I do. I surf religiously. I still skate, not like I used to. I try to stay away from vert. But I mean, once in a while, I still got to hit it. But I still am friends, too, with all my skateboard uh, heroes uh, that I did the movie Thrashing with. Christian Hasoy, Tony Alva, Jay Adams, Eddie Radigi, Steve Olson, the list goes on. What was it like going to Iron Man's birthday party? Can I go with you next year? Well, I'll have to ask Robert Downey Jr. about that. But I took my three <laughs> sons, and they absolutely had a blast. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. knows how to throw a party, man, let me tell you. And uh, what we did is we, he showed uh, Captain America, the new Captain America movie, uh, at, at the party. And he served all kinds of delicious food and soft drinks and popcorn and candy. And it was really, really, really a lot of fun. And we're still very good friends. That's awesome. What are some of the things in life that make you smile? Well, first is my family. That, that's number one. And uh, I think seeing other people happy makes me smile. And I love a good sense of humor. And I like kids like you that have a, a big brain and a big heart. And uh, also, you know, honestly, um, anything to do with spirituality is what makes me smile the most. Can you tell us about your new movie, Black Asylum, that you are working on? Thank you, yes. Um, you know, I wrote this film, Black Asylum, and my idea was to utilize all the horror actors that I've known over the years of being in the business, and instead of doing the Hollywood, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Heather Langenkamp, I'm trying to do a, yeah, thank you. Um, instead of using the uh, traditional uh, uh, ho Hollywood uh, old school way of putting a cast together and trying to um, raise the money in that way, I thought, you know what, why don't I just 
ask my friends that have been in cool horror movies over the years and do a who's who of horror movie actors film cast. And so that's what my idea was going into the writing of Black Asylum. Now I'm in the process of uh, taking the actors that I have attached and going to financiers to raise the money so I can go out and just shoot this bad boy guerrilla style. Awesome. What are some of your favorite bands you like to listen to? Well, you know what? I'm always a fan of the classics. There's so, it, it, it's really funny that you ask because I like so many different kinds of music. Funk, punk, rock, Bach, classic country. I just like what I like, right? And oh, and you gotta always mention reggae, right? But you know, I grew up on, on bands like Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and uh, The Who and uh, Queen. I always loved those kinds of bands. And then, you know, I got into the punk scene for a while, and I like Black Flag and Fear and Suicidal Tendencies. Um, I would also like uh, some of my favorites of all time are like Al Green and Marvin Gaye. And then I can go over to the other side to Patsy Cline. And so, you know, the, the, my repertoire is very expanded in music. Uh, lately, I've been, for some reason, working out to some prodigy. I don't know, I've been bringing that back for a minute, just getting all, like, rambunctious in my workouts. S you know, smack my bitch up. You know that song? <laughs> okay, here's some fun stuff. Marvel Comics or DC Comics? Marvel. All. Day. Long. The only exception, possibly, could be Batman, but Marvel. Science class in school or weird science, the movie? Science class in school. Weird science right after. <laughs> Skating or surfing? Surfing. When there's a perfect wave, there is no comparison to the adrenaline rush and the fulfillment of surfing. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street, part two or part three? Or what? Nightmare on Elm Street, part two or three. Nightmare on Elm Street, part two. Part two, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Disco dancing or lift weight or lifting weights? Disco dancing or lifting weights. Is it possible to do both at the same time? Probably. <laughs> nice. I'd have to say disco dancing, man. Disco's back. Bruce Lee or Steven Cigar? Bruce Lee. <laughs> Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. <laughs> okay. Steven Cigar. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I owe you it's a dollar. okay. It's okay. I think I owe you a dollar for that. <laughs> Okay, here's some have you ever questions. Have you ever been abducted by aliens? Not that I know of or not that I can remember. I refuse to answer that in the grounds that it may incriminate them. <laughs> have you ever seen a real ghost? No, I have not. But do you ever really know? No. I've had the feeling that I've seen some kind of apparition before, but I've never really admitted it because I thought people might think I'm crazy. I, I say that kind of stuff and people think I'm crazy. <laughs> Have you had an out, of, uh, an out of body experience? Actually, I have. I was meditating in um, my martial arts class when I was about your age and I could feel myself uh, flying over a mountaintop, and that is sort of like a, uh, a byproduct of deep, deep meditation. Um, I think I also have had Autobot experiences when I was close to death. Uh, I almost drowned one time surfing in Mexico, and I saw my life flash before my eyes, and I was at peace. And then I felt a hand grab the back of my wetsuit and put me on a board and save me. And there was another time when I was drowning in the Colorado River. I actually was uh, intertubing with a bunch of friends of mine, and uh, 
we had all of our inner tubes tied together, and there was about 12 of us going down the rapids, and my inner tube uh, uh, broke free from the pack, and I got caught upside down between these two tree branches that were protruding from the water, and I was stuck upside down, and I, I knew in my mind I was gonna drown, and I remember having an outer body experience and I let all my breath out and I relaxed and some kind of superhuman strength came over me and I broke this branch that must have been about four inches thick. There's no way I could break it with my regular strength. I don't even think two men could. But because I trusted and I relaxed and my mind sort of focused on something outside of myself, I snapped that branch in two and I came tumbling to the side of the water and I lived. That is crazy. <laughs> Have you ever seen a shark while surfing? Have I ever seen what? A shark while surfing. No, I have not. The closest I came to seeing a shark while surfing, I was surfing in Mexico and this gray figure flashed by and I freaked out and I lifted my foot, feet up onto my board and all of a sudden I saw the water break and these teeth come out and I flipped out. You know what it was? What? A dolphin. <laughs> yeah, and it scared me to death. But obviously the dolphin didn't do anything to me, and they're friendly. And usually when dolphins are around, usually that means there's no sharks around. So, Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, I just want to say that being here at Scares That Care Weekend has been really cool. And I love... Anything to do with helping kids. I love kids. You know, I have three sons myself. Johnny Ray's five. Gnarly Charlie is eight. And King James is nine. And I am very involved in their school. Uh, I'm involved in charity work. Um, Make-A-Wish Foundation, Mark of, March of Dimes. There's a lot of things that I like to do when I give back. I mostly like to give back to kids, and that's why... Doing this interview with, with you has been the highlight of my weekend. You're a good kid. Thank you. Thank you so much for this amazing interview. I'm so happy that I got to do this. Well, that sounded like you really meant it. <laughs> How genuine. I really did mean it. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right.